Hello and welcome to the Cleaner Watch Show. I'm going to dive into a number of EV stories today for you, including Tesla's release of the beta, full self-driving beta 10.0. Also, we're going to talk about Toyota's uh, testing of their solid state batteries and actual prototype EVs. We'll talk about how battery electric vehicle market share has doubled in the USA um, through July of 2021 as compared to last year. Also, Volkswagen has introduced over the air software updates to their ID series of vehicles. And in addition, they recently unveiled the ID.life, which is a compact car that will cost around 20,000 euros that should be available sometime around 2025. So stick around and we'll dive into all these news stories. The first news story is that Tesla has released version 10.0 of their full self-driving beta software to the early release testers. And what's really exciting is this was done on time with the timeline that Elon Musk mentioned earlier this month. On September 1st, Elon mentioned on Twitter that FSD Beta 10 would roll out on midnight Friday of next week. And of course, that's exactly what happened. He also mentioned, looks promising that Beta 10.1, about two weeks later, will be good enough for public opt-in request button. Of course, we've heard a lot from Elon about the button where if you own a Tesla vehicle and you have paid for the full self-driving software, Tesla will eventually release a button where you can opt in to full self-driving beta if you wanna try out some of the new features before they're released to the rest of the fleet. This might actually be available finally at the very end of this month. And that's really something exciting to look forward to. When it comes to some of the users that have been testing out full self-driving beta 10, Rob Maurer from Tesla Daily recently tested out beta 10 of Tesla's full self-driving software, and he was impressed. You can see Rob Maurer's entire drive on YouTube on his channel, but he mentioned here on Twitter, well, my car just got way better downloading an update overnight. I got FSD beta. Here's my first time trying it out. Rob's test drive is performed in downtown Milwaukee and the beginning of it starts a little dicey where he, uh, the car has a little bit of an issue finding its way to the correct area, partially because there were no lane lines. It's kind of an interesting area of a downtown environment, but there were lots of obstacles and difficult things to maneuver around and the car actually did decently well. In regards to how well the car is performing on its own with a new software update, the passenger that is riding with Rob said at one point in the video, it makes it seem like this is actually possible. And Rob responded, yes, that's exactly what I am thinking. Elon Musk even responded to Rob Maurer's tweet saying, nice drive. It sure makes it look like Tesla is going to be able to achieve full self-driving with their Tesla Vision camera-based system. Elon Musk provided further commentary when he mentioned FSD 10 predicts height from video pixels directly without needing to classify groups of pixels into objects. In principle, even if a UFO crashed on the road right in front of you, it would still avoid the debris. Some work still needed to tune sensitivity. Tesla Raj also tested out full self-driving beta 10. And of course, he's worth a follow. If you're not already following him on Twitter and YouTube, make sure that you do that. He's a good resource for Tesla information. But anyways, he posted this on Twitter and he mentioned that there have been some pretty big visual improvements since October's initial release of full self-driving beta. And he put this tweet out with these side-by-side -side pictures. He also posted a very helpful thread, which I'll cover a few of the posts in this thread, but I definitely recommend you check out the whole thread where he talks about some improvements from the previous versions of full self-driving beta. But as he mentioned, there is more fine tuning needed. In one of the tweets in this thread, he mentioned prior builds, if a car in front of you needed to turn right, FSD beta would bring the vehicle to a stop. Now you can see the vehicle in front turns right and we slow down to 20 miles per hour and smoothly continue. Really liked this. Of course, that's a really important feature because this is reacting a lot more like a normal human driver would. One of the main issues that Tesla Raj did point out that still needs some tweaking comes down to cross traffic. In this tweet, he mentioned, here's another cross traffic left turn, which again, it's working hard, but I still need to mash on the accelerator for it to make it 
as a car was approaching. It seems to want to be aggressive, but in instances is still very hard to achieve. And there are a number of other situations that Tesla Raj took this car through. Overall, it did very well. But once again, this is still beta release and there still are issues to work out. But Tesla is making really great progress and it gives me a lot of confidence that they will achieve full self-driving with their camera-based vision system. The next story that I want to move to revolves around Toyota and solid state batteries. Although in the 90s, they pioneered hybrid electric vehicle technology with the Prius, and they've even dabbled with an all-electric RAV4, which their second generation of the RAV4 electric was actually powered with a Tesla powertrain. But despite all this, that RAV4 electric project was short-lived, and they've maintained their emphasis on hybrid electric vehicles. Thankfully though, they did start selling their first electric vehicles in China last year. And as early as next year, they should be selling an all electric SUV that looks very similar to the RAV4 called the BZ4X. However, despite being reluctant to enter the EV space, Toyota has invested a lot of resources into solid state battery technology. According to a December 2020 article from Nikkei Asia, Toyota holds over 1000 patents related to solid state batteries which makes them a leader in solid state battery technology, at least when it comes to the number of patents that they hold. However, Toyota's solid state battery technology is not just staying in the lab, but they're actually testing this in prototype vehicles that have approval to drive on the road. At a recent presentation, Toyota's chief technical officer mentioned the following about this. In June last year, we built a vehicle equipped with all solid state batteries conducted test runs on a test course and obtained driving data. Based on that data, we continued to make improvements and in August last year, we obtained license plate registration for vehicles equipped with all solid state batteries and conducted test drives. However, in that same presentation, Toyota's chief technical officer did mention that these batteries are not quite ready for prime time. He went on to say, we found that short service life was an issue. To solve this and other issues, we need to continue development, mainly of solid electrolyte materials. When it comes to the actual timing of when we may see production vehicles with solid state batteries from Toyota, he mentioned that these solid state batteries would be ready for introduction in the second half of the 2020s. So while I am excited about Toyota's foray into solid state batteries, once again, it will be a number of years before we actually see this technology reach production ready vehicles. So in the meantime, I think it's important that we continue to improve our current lithium ion batteries as Tesla is doing with the 4680 batteries. The next news story comes from Volkswagen's press page and they mention Volkswagen introduces over the air software updates on all ID models. In this press release, they mention, in future, the company plans to provide its customers with free software around every 12 weeks to keep vehicles up to date and improve the customer experience. Some of the new functions affect the ID light, a strip at the bottom of the windscreen. It now gives the driver information that can provide intuitive support for energy saving driving and when driving with an automatic distance control system, active cruise control. Image processing has also been improved for the multifunction camera, allowing it to recognize motorcycles and other road users even more swiftly. This is of course a really big move for Volkswagen. I think this is really important that all electric vehicles are capable of over the air software updates. This is something that VW talked about would be coming and it's actually exciting to see it finally happening. Tesla has definitely proven how important over the air software updates can be. And it's nice to see that Volkswagen will also be doing regular over the air software updates now as well. Our next news story also comes from Volkswagen because they recently released their new concept vehicle, the VW ID.life. According to them, quote, the ID.life is our vision of next generation fully electric urban mobility. The concept car provides a preview of an ID dot model in the small car segment that we will be launching in 2025, priced at around 20,000 euros. When it comes to some of the basic specs that this car should have, they mentioned that it will be front wheel drive. It'll have a 172 kilowatt electric motor. 
and be able to accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, which is roughly zero to 62 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds. And it will have a 57 kilowatt hour battery. And VW estimates that with this 57 kilowatt hour battery, that this compact vehicle will be able to travel around 400 kilometers in a single charge on the WLTP cycle, or roughly 249 miles. A 20,000 euro electric vehicle is going to be very important for the market, just as Tesla's $25,000 compact car coming out hopefully sometime in the next year or two, it will be really important as well. And it's nice to see that VW is going to have a more affordable entrant as well in the near future. There is one other important nugget from this VW press release that I want to point out, and this is the fact that they mentioned, quote, by 2030, Volkswagen aims to increase the share of all electric models in total vehicle sales in Europe to at least 70% and in North America and China to at least 50%. This is, of course, really important because the Volkswagen Group is a huge auto manufacturer. Volkswagen and Toyota really kind of jockey back and forth for that top position every year. They're two very large auto manufacturers, and it's very important that these large auto manufacturers go all in on electric vehicles. Volkswagen appears to have a strong commitment to electric vehicles, and they're bringing out a lot of great models like the, the ID3, the ID4, etc. And I'm excited that they are committed to electric vehicles. It's also really important for VW success because the world is transitioning to electric vehicles. And if VW is going to thrive, they need to transition very heavily like they have plans to do so. When it comes to how quickly the world will transition to EVs, in September of 2020, Elon tweeted in response to Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, seven years for sure to 30 million plus new fully electric vehicles per year, six years maybe. Five years is possible, but unlikely. An extra year makes a giant difference when it comes to exponentials. So what Elon Musk was referring to is the total global market of all vehicles sold sometime in the next five to seven years. And this 30 million plus vehicle estimate could represent somewhere around 40% of all global sales around 2027. So it's going to be really important that a company like VW does a heavy transition from their mainly internal combustion engine lineup to a more electric lineup. And thankfully, they appear to be doing just that. Our next story is very encouraging. However, it shows that we have a long way to go in the United States when it comes to transitioning to fully electric vehicles. Inside EVs recently reported BEV market share in the US more than doubled through July of 2021. In this article, they mention, quote, according to the car registration data from Experian via Automotive News, from January to July 2021, some 255,393 electric vehicles have been registered, which is 113% more than a year ago. So obviously a 113% increase is really impressive. However, the number, the percentage of BEV market share is still very small in the United States. This article went on to say, quote, the market share for BEVs stands at about 2.6% compared to 1.6% a year ago. So once again, it's encouraging to see that the electric vehicle market share in the United States is rising, but 2.6% is still very minuscule. We, of course, need to be raising at a much higher level, and I believe we will in the following years, especially with companies like VW really investing in electric vehicles. And of course, Tesla's goal is to reach somewhere around 20 million vehicles per year by or slightly before 2030. So do let me know what you think about this new news segment and let me know if uh, you have any comments about some of the news stories that we've talked about. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below and I appreciate you watching all the way through to the end. I did want to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, you can find a link in the description below. Thank you so much.